Clearly mid-range isn't good. All right, Loxo bots. Loxos refer to venerated Loxon on here. Get a standard staple Convoke onto your dorks. We got a bunch of freebies. Glint Hawks, Legion's Landing, Thraben Inspector, Toolcraft Exemplar, Signal Pest to, uh, to kind of put a bunch of things into play and venerated Loxon onto them. This deck can frequently put, um, I don't know, six to 10 power into play by turn two, which is sweet. We also have Ghost Quarters in the mana base to pair with Le Leon and Arbiter, as well as just like generic mana disruption. We've got a bunch of utility lands. We also have Sheffit Dunes to give our creatures plus one, plus one till end of turn. Sunbake Canyon to draw extra cards. So we're base mono white in the main deck. But we do have some abrades and a wear tear on the sideboard. You can splash lots of different secondary colors in this archetype. We're choosing to splash red today. Let's uh, go ahead and dive onto a league and see how this one goes. I believe the original variation of this archetype in modern was innovated by Jim Davidson friends for a SCG Invitational some time ago, shortly after shortly after the Loxodon was printed. But we've not. We've not played it since we gained Sunbake Canyon. Although I think they played they played Horizon Canopy before, so it's not that big of a difference. ELD drops next Thursday. Uh, Kiki Cord will be in the deck queue for later, Jet, for sure. 10, 10 out of 10 will be in there. This hand's kind of gas. Man, Lotus Petal's busted, chat. Lotus, Lotus Petal's real good. Go. We did all that, and now they're going to have a Lightning Helix, and we're going to die. Is how I assume this is about to work. Rude. We tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter anymore. Man, can we ever beat a Batter Skull game one? I'm not sure that we can. Ho -ho! Wait, is this sorcery only? Man, this card sucks. It's sorcery only. Yikes. All right, are we just dead? I think we're just dead. All right, I'm gonna concede. <laughs> Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. I don't really like giving answers to questions like that spread up because uh, I think that that should, questions like that should be data-driven decisions, not just like my feelings. Stoneforge, Stoneforge Mystic too strong. Please ban. Dear, dear Watsy, how could you possibly unban this card? Please, please nerf. Um, I'm gonna trim a couple of Memnites and then Toolcraft Exemplar, I think. Just because I probably have a hard time keeping too many artifacts into play against their deck. Let's try, let's try this. <clears throat>
I mean, I think Burn's probably the best deck in Modern. So with that in mind, it's probably Red-White, right? Huh? I think it's Gideon. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it's just like Legion's Landing or Mox Opal. I guess the Opal doesn't really do anything. This has been, this has been an experience so far. I think there is a reason why honest aggro decks like this one, generally speaking, tend to not be competitive in modern. They're, they have a hard time playing through disruption, like there against the Jeskai deck, and they also have a hard time racing the linear decks in the format. So they kind of, they kind of get squeezed from both ends if they don't have their absolutely best draw. All right, well, <clears throat> Legion's Landing was an okay pick up here. Let's us, uh, gives us something else to do with our mana this turn. And then next turn I can go land Arbiter Loxodon, which is pretty decent. Oh, they're playing the self mill deck. So they cast triple lightning helix, but they didn't find anything else useful there, huh? But they're now at 28, so they've got that going for them. So remember, this is our second turn. So on turn two here, we now have four, six, eight, 10, 12. We have 15 power on turn two.
We are we are playing the GAC. The GAC is back. The GAC is back. Someone asked what I'm stacking on for breakfast. I have some some cheese some cheese blocks and some pretzels. Not not terribly exciting. Unfortunately, our opponent triple lightning helix us on their turn two. So he might actually not be fast enough here. Always love the content, then you promote mostly intellectual chat about magic. I haven't seen Giddy of Allies end in a while. Is this the only modern deck that plays it? Um Oh, they forgot to pay for the cat. <sighs> Yikes. Um it's not, comp oh, they, they don't know how it works. They don't know how it works. Moto, Moto interface, no. Get Motoed opponent, get Motoed. For reference, you have to click on your opponent's card to activate, to turn this off. This card is rancid and it's programmed rancidly and it's just miserable all around. This card is about 10 percentage points better on Magic Online than it is in paper. Uh, to answer the... To answer the what's it called question, the Gideon question, uh, we actually just played a control deck before this with Gideon the sideboard. So Gideon's like a white grindy card, basically. It's 80% better on Voto Fair. Uh, they added something and then they removed it because people complained that it was too helpful or something like that, if I recall. They, if they double stone rain themselves while paying a life, that might make us fast enough. Where is Chef at Dudes when you need it, chat? All right, so these blocks put them to one. Hummus is great. Wonder where, makes me wonder what this game would look like if my opponent was plus two lands. I feel like we'd still be winning, but it's it's impossible to know. Let's stand up. So you're dead.
Three mana Vivian can find adventures, Trax. Adventures, adventures are creatures everywhere except the stack when they're currently in instant or sorcery being cast for that side. I don't have a source for you on that offhand. But can it, oh, can it cast the adventure half? That is a good question. Judge. All right. So a real question here is how interactive do I, do I want to be? I, de I definitely want rest in peace in this match. The question is, do I also want path to exile? I'm not sure that I do. Maybe I want some of them on the draw. Let's trim around the edges here. Our cicada friend is back. Maybe, maybe he never left and I just started blocking it out. I mean, it was obvious to me because I read how they work. We're over 270,000 people in Berlin for the climate strike. It's impressive. Non, Non-US countries actually show up for change. It's weird. It's probably probably in large part because if you don't if you don't show up to work in the US, you can get fired. And if you get fired, you lose your health care. And then your family can go broke over a medical bill. So it's almost like not having nationalized health care is a tool of oppression to keep people from instigating change. Weird, right? Funny, funny how that works. That's nonsense. You could, that's true. You can still go broke with insurance in the U.S. So one of the, one of the shticks that the bad faith Democrats and Republicans talk about is there's people out there that really like their private insurance, so they need to be able to keep that. Do you wanna do you wanna hear everything you need to know about private insurance in the United States? I am very fortunate, and my wife works for a major company, and we have we have what is considered good insurance. The what is considered good insurance that we have, the company that provides that insurance is so miserable that my wife's company that she works for hired a third party company so my wife and the other employees don't have to directly interact with the insurance company because there's so much BS and bureaucracy that you have to cut through that it's miserable. So the employees were having such issues dealing with the good health insurance company that they hired a third party company to help their employees navigate the insurance company. It, it is awful. And then again, consider the fact that what I just said, I am considered fortunate and have some of the better health insurance that's available privately in the United States. That's, that's the reality. There is, there is a reason why those companies spend absurd amounts of money lobbying against Medicare for all in a public option. People, people like uh, Elizabeth Warren and uh, Bernie, I love when they go into their rants about there's people, they've met people who like their doctors and like like their physicians and their their therapists, but they don't like their insurance company. Their their insurance company is just the only option.
All right, well, Mox Opal was a good draw, right? Because it lets me, uh, lets me deploy... Let's me deploy the venerated Loxid on this turn, which is sweet. In my country, people employed are medically insured through government insurance, apart from several broad sets of circumstances that make you make you eligible despite unemployment. Someone did the math that maintaining the system leads to verifying. You are entitled. It's likely more costly than just giving insurance. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that troll. It's like it's like when when uh, conservatives make the awful argument that you should you should drug test people to give them um, disability and medical benefits and social and things like that in the United States. It costs more to drug test everyone than it does to actually just give those benefits to the small amount of people who are actually on drugs. Like, it's so it's so dumb. Such a such a bad use of funds. <clears throat> it's like, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's not about money. It's about control. It's exactly, it's exactly correct. All right, let's attack for a bunch here, huh? The flip legions landing here too. Good deal. Opponent like trying to be this kind of interactive deck this game and not really working out for them. This gives them three more cards to their bin since they're getting to block, but I definitely can't just not attack here. They get a prized amalgam and nothing else useful, so that's good for us. Um, if I cycle this, I can still do this, so that's fine. This is free with Mox Opal, which is cute. Yep. Yeah, the, the wealth inequality in the United States has just gotten worse and worse over the years. funny maybe maybe someday people will wake up and stop voting against their own best interests but people people being hateful is a pretty powerful pretty powerful thing so that's a lot of amalgams coming back here Should we go to 13 here? <sighs> hey, if they tax the Uber rich, doesn't that mean someone me someone like me making less than 90k is gonna get screwed? Yeah. What if what if I make more than 10 million dollars someday, chat? You can't, you can't tax people extra on their 50 millionth and first dollar what if i make 60 million dollars someday you might you're taking my potential future money by taxing that that's unreasonable sometimes sometimes I've, de I've definitely had to resist on more than one occasion, just like saying to family members, like, 
You don't make enough money to be a Republican. Stop voting against your own best interests. <laughs> Like you, you are too broke to vote Republican. Stop it. Stop. All right, so they've got two blockers here. We're attacking for six, nine, 10, 11, 12. So they need to, they need to at least trade or chump block here. <clears throat> They are called Bezo Bucks for a reason. Yeah, some, someday we'll just like Jeff Bezos will own everything and we'll just like pay him dividends, which is great because Bezos basically already pays for my stuff. So, you know, God bless Twitch Prime. Bezos, Bezos. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good too. All right, so they're going to 10 here and I'm gaining five. And notably I can make an Adanto first fort blocker. That's just effectively like a gain four because it's going to block a three plus gain one. There's an excellent book written by Robert Nutter that's called Can Democracy Survive Global Capitalism? All right, so if they only attack with these, we just take four because if Signal Pest isn't dying, every one power creature I have is a lethal attacker. Bezos is a failure of capitalism, just like every billionaire is a failure of capitalism. At a certain point, hard work and innovation doesn't continue to make you extra profits. At a certain point, you are profiting off of the hard work and struggle of other people. At a, at a certain rate, at a certain point, you can't just work harder and make more money. It caps out at a certain point. All right, so they have one, two, three, four, five blockers. Um... I have one, two, three, four, five extra attackers, but my attackers are also going to trade with these prize muggles, right? So I think I think I just chef at dunes and ship here, right? It's like if they don't have if they don't have a removal spell, they're dead because I have this as an attacker too. And if they do have a removal spell, I don't have to attack with everything. Oh wait, even if they have a removal spell, right? I have two two things that can only be blocked by flying. No, they're fine, right? Because they push one and then and then do the other. Hey, thanks for continuing your sub gift, Oki. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. All right. One and one. Slow, slow and steady. Lost to the incredibly oppressive and too powerful Stoneforge Mystic. Bested, bested the, the combo mill deck. Just came by to drop off some free dollar dues. Keep up the great work. Thanks for the 16 months, Sintess. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So keeping me around. <clears throat> That's true. Grim Lava Mancer did also give us a little bit of a shakedown. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a keep, right? So, do I just Thalia on one here? I think I just Thalia on one, right? Uh, 
Thanks for the four months, Rollins. And Nikki Two Shoes, thanks for staying on with that uh, that tier one sub. Welcome back. Kind of, kind of feeling like we're in a rock and hard place already. Yeah, I agree, Burgle. That's like exactly the thought, right? Like I dumped my entire hand and like I feel like the hands where I don't have Loxodon, my creatures just get outclassed, right? And like now my opponent has this engine where like they just get to sack things. So like they sack the Citadel to get started and then they make a token and they just get to keep doing that from here on out. If poor people voted for their best interest, Hippity, they could force people who are wealthy to not be able to vote for the people that are in their best interest. Because guess what? There's a lot more poor people, poor people in, in the country than there are wealthy people. I'm I'm saying that I don't think I don't think that's incorrect reason. I think that's very consistent, Hippity. If everyone in the country in general tended to vote in their best interests, we just never beat this hanger back walker. Um the people who are greedy in voting for their best interests would be outnumbered. Yes, yep. What is a net worth of negative 180k makes someone asking for a friend? Woof. Yep, that's the that's the reality for a lot of people. Big big gaps, big gaps. Make someone a US student. Yeah, probably probably actually. Sad but accurate. Uh, all my two drops are pretty bad here, right? Like Thalia making their stuff cost more is not very meaningful. Leon and Arbiter, they're never searching their deck. I'm probably not ghost courting them that much. So I'm just going to bring in removal and Zendikar and go. That's, that's a good comparison. Punching down versus punching up. If you vote against your best interest to help people below you, that's morally positive. If you vote against your best interest to help people above you, that's questionable. Yeah, just like hoping hoping things trickle down. No sources of colored mana. This hand just like also doesn't really do anything. I think I'm supposed to mulligan. This hand is also rancid. Okie doke, keep. Yeah, whenever whenever you see really wealthy people donate things, like, you should always think about it in terms of percentages. Like, if someone like Jeff Bezos donates, say, you know, $100,000 somewhere, that sounds like a lot to, like, normal people, right? But to him, in terms of, like, percentage of his income, it's really not a meaningful donation. Or a significant, significant donation. It's still meaningful, it's not significant. All right, 
Turn three, Chad. I'm not sure Chad's gonna power through animation module. Only has an 80K salary. Yeah, that reminds me of the people who like praised Trump for saying, saying he wasn't gonna take a presidential salary. It's like that, that grifter's making money so many other places. Yeah, like Turnberry, exactly. How's it going so far? Uh, the blue white control deck we played was okay, a little bit suboptimal. This deck's having a rough go of it. This deck's, this deck's average draws seem to be pretty unimpressive. The absolute best draws that this deck generates seem to be pretty reasonable, but like the median draw does not seem to be particularly great. Like, we had a turn earlier where we put 15 power into play on turn two, which was, like, genuinely impressive. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Pelly. We keep having game... The games that don't involve Loxodon, we keep, like, dumping our hand and then, like, not doing anything. Do I want to plus this? I think I want to plus this in attack so that way I can emblem it. Speaking of insurance, I'm Italian and recently moved to the Netherlands where they have a very nice system. National health insurance is mandatory and costs around, I think that's a euro, whatever that dollar sign is. But if your income is low, the government gives 80% of that back every month. <clears throat> All right, maybe maybe we can slam through here. My opponent has not found a payoff yet, which is like really good for us. All right, speaking speaking of decent for us. All right, I think we're just waiting a turn then. We're just like do I think I'm going to do this, make a dork pass, and then next turn we'll go emblem plus chef at smash. Yeah, I can, I, I'm willing to draft sideboards for standard submissions. That's fine, Tomas. So feel feel free to submit 60 card decks. Just know we're going to play best of three and I'm going to put a sideboard together. So what happens if I smash with everything? They have five blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attackers. Not a whole lot yet. I think I'm gonna wait one more turn. Cause I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add two guys to the board this turn. I guess I could attack with my bigger creatures here. What if I smash with my four fours, my four power guys? Yeah, let's do, let's do this actually. Let's just attack with the big dorks. This'll, 
This will let them make a couple of more thopters who are going to modular onto things, but that's or put more servers, but that's fine, I think. It'll be interesting to see. I think, I think regardless of who wins the 2020 election in the U.S., it's probably not going to be a very pretty scene because I think if Trump wins again, it's probably going to be without winning the popular vote again. And I think if Trump loses, like he's already been setting up, like Trump called an election that he won rigged. So I can't imagine what he's going to do and what he's going to try and incite if he actually loses the election. Yeah, and he keeps joking about Trump 2024. Maybe, maybe glass, glass half full. Maybe he keeps making Trump 2024 references because he knows he's going to lose 2020 and he's going to run again in 2024. Because if he, if he loses 2020, 2020, he could technically run in 2024, right? Right? That's, that's probably what he means, right? That's, that's probably what he means, right? All right, one emblem, please. All right, so they have five, they have five blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attackers. All my attackers have at least two power. I'm gonna sit here and do a really complex calculation. And at the end of that calculation, it's gonna be attack with all is the decision. So let's just do that. Let's just, let's just, let's just cut. Cut to the chase and get to the attack with all option. I'm gonna play the Glint Hawk here before I lose an artifact and can't play it post combat. We're of the charge faction. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, I don't really do set reviews on stream. So what I'll probably do is um, I'm, I'm planning to write a highlights article over the weekend talking about which cards from the new set I like in standard and modern. And then I'll go up on Cool Stuff Inc. sometime next week. Making, in my experience previously, making kind of set review style content tends to be less profitable for me than just like playing decks out of the deck queue. So my on my on stream, there's a reason why my on stream time focuses on the deck queue, right? It's the business model I found that works best for me. Um, I mean, technically. This gets me a mountain ghost quartering this, but I, I'm missing my other color still. Oh. All right, yeah, this is the best of my hands for sure. I'm gonna bottom the land. Let's keep the creatures in bottom of the land. Fair and bright more. Thanks for the two month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. If you're having a good one wherever you are. So if we draw a land next turn, we can lock it on on three. 
which is kind of slow by modern standards. My opponent is almost out of gas though at this point, so that's nice. They have hangar back walker plus module though, which is pretty scary all on its own. Like lets them crank this up and make a servo every turn. So hopefully we draw a white source here and go landing, landing locks it on. All right, so let's play a landing. And then we're, we're actually in an okay spot. If they don't have a way to sack their hangar back walker. That's unfortunate. So that means I can't flip the landing this turn. So I was hoping to flip the landing and then deploy another signal pest. So I'm hoping to draw any land next turn so I can go signal pest landing locks it on. So I assume they'll attack us for two here. I guess not if they want to hold this back as a blocker. All right, well, they're out. So we have we just have to beat animation module plus arc bound worker here. Land. All right, so attack with everything here to flip the landing over. They can trade here if they want, which they do, that's smart. So play another signal pest out. And then next turn I can go landing locks it on guaranteed. And they're going a little bit wide here, but I'm gonna have a lifelink token and locks it on. Locks on's an okay blocker on the ground. And like Signal Pest, Glint, Hawk, Ornithopter are all aerial attackers, basically, because these can only be Signal Pest can only be blocked by Crucial with Flying. Landing. Memnite. So if they find if they find like a Ravager or a Steel Overseer, we're obviously gonna be in a lot of trouble. But if they if they just keep bricking, I think we're currently set up to be ahead against their hangar back walker animation module grind here. <clears throat> I can't, I can't block this because uh, I can't give them a bunch of flying blockers. Would not be a good scene for us. So attack with all of these that can only be blocked by flyers. So they can, they can fire up these ink moths and trade with a signal pest if they want, which uh, honestly it might be a good play. Just like trade with a signal pest here. It effectively takes a lot of power off my side of the table. But like I'm attacking for 9, 12 here and they're at 14. So Memnite, Memnite's another chump blocker. So we'll probably start chump blocking their hangar back walker. So we can maybe not randomly die to a, to a ballista. So if they block like this, they're taking 10 and then they're dead on board next turn, right? So they need to draw something live. But if they don't double block, they're not killing any of my stuff, which is a big deal. All right, so they're taking seven and then I mean, even, even with this block, they're still dead on board, right? 
because they only have one flying blocker. So they're really, really hoping to find, really hoping to find a sacrifice outlet here. Survey says, and they're dead. All right. Sweet. We're two and one then. Not bad. Am I, gonna, am I going to be in the ELD early access on Tuesday? No. Wizards doesn't invite me to any of their official stuff. And that's, that's their prerogative. So I'll be doing... I'm actually... My Tuesday and Wednesday streams will be all modern on Magic Online. And then... Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be all standard on Magic Arena. I get I get access to it on Thursday just like everybody else. Yeah, yeah, two ones definitely definitely better. Can definitely stamp better than expected here. What was what was a Watsy sponsored event? Twitch Rivals. So Twitch Rivals is a third party event. Watsy may or may not put money into it, but Wizards of the Coast doesn't control the invite list for that. I get I get invited to most things that aren't wizards, wizards controlling the invite list because people who aren't wizards of the coast look at Twitch metrics and understand that I'm one of the larger streamers for this game. Does it bother me about Wizards of the Coast being dicks? It does, honestly. It makes me it makes me feel largely unwelcome. But they're a private company and they're allowed to do what they want. And honest honestly, the biggest the biggest thing that makes it feel most unwelcome is it gives ammunition to people who who are looking to be rude to me. Because people people who who dislike me feel validated by that by their decision and every every time something comes up we're like they invite everybody who's like of my size or smaller to it i always get petty hateful like haha you deserve this message and stuff like that it just it is what it is nothing nothing i can really do to change it Yeah, I've I've applied. I've applied, I've reached out. I've done I've done what I can do. So thank you. Thank you for assuming I don't know how this works because I do. Although, let's be honest, there's people in that event that definitely didn't apply for it. They're just big enough. But yeah, I've done I've done I've done the hoop jump in. When's the full spoiler? It's supposed to be sometime this morning. If I if I recall correctly. It's out now? Yeah, it should be should be out it's soon if not already. I mean, I'm sure it runs way deeper than that swag. I've been I've been around the magic community giving giving unpleasant unpleasant opinions for a long time. It is is what it is. Is there a budget replacement for Opal? There's really not. The reason why Mox Opal costs infinite dollars is because it's a uniquely powerful effect. All right. So, probably safe to assume they're on some Stoneforge Mystics. Probably want a couple of these. Probably want at least four removal spells here because killing killing Mentor is pretty important. It's a must answer card for sure. 
I'm gonna cut Toolcraft and Ornithopter. It's one of my go-to. I was playing Wurza versus Titan Shift, and I had two Magus in play to turn off Valakut and Field. They flipped his hand to show three copies of Scape Shift, and I flipped mine to show Stroke, Stroke, Stroke Force. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Nah, Beansy. I mean, at the end of the day, too, like, I think Wizards of the Coast is just, like, very much aware that they, like, don't have to work with me, right? Like, I'm I'm not someone who's here from another big game. Like, even if they don't want to work with me, I'm still going to be here making them money, right? Like, I'm, I'm still here playing Magic because I love playing Magic. So they don't, they don't need to throw me a bone in order for me to be profitable for them. Because let's, let's be honest, I incinerate a lot of wild cards. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of wild cards that are dead thanks to me. Mm, I wonder if I'm supposed to play Legion's Landing on one here to play around a discard spell. That's very possible. I'm going to do that now. Try and play around a discard spell with it a little bit. Oh, yeah, and, like, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like, this is my job, right? And I'm very lucky to have a really sweet job. So, like, it's not the end of the world. I just believe in honesty and transparency. So, it's like, when someone asks me, does does that treatment make me feel bad? I'm going to tell you, yes, it does. Because it does. Because I'm human, right? All right. It's, like, a pretty decent start. Don't, don't leak my mana, bro. Go. So this is our, this is our third turn, so we missed a land drop. But turn three, we have one, two, three, four, five, nine, eleven power, which is like not bad. It's actually kind of funny. When I when I had talked to someone from Watsi once upon a time, um the one of the questions that the person that I was talking to asked me was what were my plans for after magic? And I was just I was kind of taken aback. I was just like, uh why why would I do something else than magic, right? Like this is this is the best game that's ever been made. Why would why would I make plans to play a different game? That just seems silly. I appreciate the fact that you can be upset over something and not completely dismiss the party upsetting you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's important to be able to take a step back. It's like it's like when Watsi makes a business decision that's, like, doesn't please people, but it makes sense for them, right? Like, what was the goal of that question? I don't know. I think maybe that question was asked because they're used to, to like magic not being the end goal for most people. I don't I don't even think it was either of those things, Prime. I think it was a question that like they're used to like, like magic's not a big game on Twitch, right? So I think I think their their idea is like this can't be the end goal for for like people who work on Twitch. Because like it's not Fortnite or whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever the kids are actually into these days. All right, if they have a one mana spell, like a path or an opt here, we're probably toasted. If they don't have a one mana spell here, we got a real shot. Path is pretty devastating, though. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, Path lets them eat my 2-3. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to really stabilize from here. Or push, not stabilize. I think they've stabilized. We're not really going to be able to push through the last few chunks of damage. They're going to, I guess they're going to four. All right, maybe, maybe if they're out of removal. I think, I think I'm actually playing this and picking up the clue. So like I could bounce and replay the Ornithopter. But I think the Ornithopter having a power is important here. Because, like, if they're on nothing and I draw an untapped land, I can chef at Dunes kill them. All right. Diba, 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 that's all, folks. Let's, uh, let's roll on into the, the fifth and final match with this one. <clears throat> Lingering Souls, for those not familiar, is going to create two 1-1 one, one flying tokens. So our, our chance of being able to go up over the top there is not great. Did you read that Dot Esports wrote that Yuza had the better, I assume, deck than you? And Priest and Flooding is why you won? Super rude? I don't think that's super rude. And that's, that's something I really hate in our society that happens. We live in a society, just because the truth isn't ideal doesn't mean you should it, it call people out or be upset that they told the truth. The, the person that wrote that Dot .esports article was probably watching my stream and heard me say effectively that. I, that matchup was likely very bad for the deck that I was playing. And I was very fortunate that Yuza stumbled in game one and flooded in game two for me to win. Because Magic is a game that has an absurd amount of variance by design. That's just how the game works. Thanks for the 22 months, G. Miller. I appreciate that. Welcome. As someone, as someone who can correctly identify when he's gotten unlucky, I can also generally identify when I've gotten incredibly fortunate. And I, I needed to be incredibly fortunate to win that finals match, and I was. And we did. That's just how magic works. Here's, here's a hot take for people out there that are newer to magic. Anyone who wins any Magic tournament got incredibly fortunate at several points to win that tournament. The best players in the game in Magic the Gathering are only winning 60 to 70% of their matches at most. Do, do the math on how lucky you need to be to 8-1 or 7-1 a tournament with a 70% win rate. The answer is very lucky. My opponent mulligan to five, then did nothing and died. So I'm going to click submit. It's actually part of the reason they do... One of, at the, the Mythic Invitational and the Mythic Championships, when they do like the post-match interviews, they're so awkward a lot of the time. Because like when you're playing magic at a level where both players are good magic players, when both players are similar skill level, the games come down to variance more often because neither player is making mistakes, right? So it's who runs a bit hotter a lot of the time. So like the post the post match interviews where they're like, yeah, I ran good, they ran bad, they mulliganed, got lucky, like. They're just, they're just being honest, right? It's not even about socially awkward AGH. It's just like those interviews feel like they're trying to like push a narrative that's not true. That like the better player won or like they made some skillful decisions. And like a lot of the time at high level magic, that's like not the case, right? Like when two good players are playing against each other, whoever gets a little bit luckier wins a lot of the time.
I got you, Jet. Second Mox Opal that doesn't do anything. Sounds good. All right, they've got two Tron pieces. Do, do you have a third? They do. Show me Oblivion Stone. Yep. Oh, that's true. That's true. I don't know why I thought this was three artifacts. It's if you have three, it gains first strike. Okay, so I missed some damage. I don't think it matters because they have an Oblivion Stone, but... Let's, let's take the third game on the play. We'd have been plus four points of damage there, 14. They'd be at 11, maybe... I, don't know, I feel like this deck wants some reach in it. I think the last time we played this, I think the last time we played this deck, we played Galvanic Blast in the main, which is like was like pretty good. Reach up and beat people down. I don't know how how MTGO bot figures that out. I feel like I need to fork MTGO bot or like write my own or something. Cause like the last two times I've pinged the creator of it to try and get something fixed, it hasn't worked. Like we have we have this this plug in there that's too long for me to delete now. Just like randomly pops up. I pinged him on Discord a couple of times. Yeah, this hand's great, right? This hand's like really good, actually. We're gonna go turn one, this, 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 this. And then I can turn to Loxodon. Storm is four, go. Thalia. <laughs> Magic's a hard game when you're lucky, chat. All right, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're gonna attack for 17 on turn three. We're gonna attack for 17 next turn, I believe. All right, so if they have Tron Worm Coil, they could be okay. But they can't all as Dust because of Thalia and they can't play in Krakow Stone. So it's looking like we're gonna get a good clean turn four kill here on the play. Sometimes magic feels like both players roll a D100 and the higher number wins. Yep. All right, well they have Tron next turn. I think this is 17. Which actually means Worm Coil is not good enough, right? Because Signal Pest plus Ornithopter kills them. I have first strike damage too. These are both first strike. So yeah, they're dead. They're dead through Worm Coil here. And they can't have a sweeper. A sweeper doesn't exist. All is all his dust wouldn't even save them because I have three damage on just these. But they can't cast all his dust because Thalia's in play. 
Yeah, they're dead, dead like six different ways here. Yeah, they need, they need, their outs involve Simeon Spirit Guide. They need double Spirit Guide Oblivion Stone. So, like, games like that make me think there's maybe something here. Because, like, the best draws that this deck can produce are, they're, honestly, they're really impressive. I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what we can do to make the average draw better, though. So, last, last time we played this deck list, we played... Kadaltha Rebirth and Galvanic Blast, I think. And both of those cards felt pretty reasonable, if I recall correctly. Rebirth Sweet, especially because it gives you three bodies for Venerated Loxodon. But yeah, I think trying, trying to figure out some way to make the draws without Loxodon better would be the goal. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's just like the consistency is there basically or not. And honestly, so as a random thought, what if, so we have the new set coming up. What if we splash green for the second color and we play once upon a time and just like have four more cards that give you five shots of venerated Loxodon? Like that, that's going to be something that you're going to want to start trying in a lot of different decks, right? It's just like once upon a time, it's just like an extra four chances at your best card in a lot of different decks. So that could be a reason to take. I like the idea of experimental frenzy. The Stoneforge Mystic deck we played against, the, the decks with a lot of removal felt kind of hard. Like we lost to Jeskai and we lost to Esper. So some number of experimental frenzy, if we stay in red, could be reasonable. But some some way to maybe grind through those those interactive decks could be a reasonable choice too. So yeah, I think I think that would be my things to try. If I was going to play this again, I would make a point to try once upon a time with the green splash, I think. Alright, so we're gonna be rolling into some standard up next year. We're gonna take a quick ad break. <laughs> 